Sunday afternoon in Sunrise, Florida, and less than 24 hours after a wild shootout win over Tampa Bay, the Boston Bruins are warming up for a rare 5 o'clock start against the Panthers. Hi, Peter. How are you? Good to have you with us. How did you think of the game last night? It was exciting. Bruins owner Jeremy Jacobs has a home nearby, so he and his family are at the game and catching up with general manager Peter Shirelli. It wasn't pretty, but we we, we, needed it. we found a way to win. Yeah, we did that. But I don't mind that on the road. No, I, I like winning. As the Jacobs family welcomes more guests and the game gets underway, it's clear that Jeremy Jacobs isn't just the Bruins owner. He's a Bruins fan. And despite being 1,463 miles south of Boston, He's not alone here. God, there's a lot of Bruins fans here. Oh, God, they were noisy as hell about it. The Bees go on to a 5-2 win over the Panthers, which makes the team and the owner very happy. Following the victory, the Bees have a rare day off on the road, and the boss has invited everyone over to the house for a cookout. How are you, young man? Happy birthday. Thank you. Hey, you remember. How, how can I forget? Being the captain of the Bruins means that you are the lead. There it is. Go time. Go time. There's one. I got some dignity. Smitty, feel it, buddy. Feel it. The boys are certainly making themselves at home and enjoying the Jacobs family hospitality. Not surprisingly, one Bruin is up to his usual shenanigans. Or the 60. Mm. Mm. 90 to 100. Mm. Mm. That's my yard. Yeah. yeah. I got, I got one. Is it? Yeah. Over by the tree? Hey, where'd you get the gas bikes? <laughs> Thanks to Jeremy Jacobs and his family, it has been an epic off day for the boys. Now, it's back to work. And they can leave the sunblock behind because next stop on the roadie is Montreal. Okay, now we're going with two here. Just shoot the puck here. Shoot the puck. The Bruins players are back on the ice at the Bell Center preparing for the Canadians. With a veteran team and a coach like Claude Julien, practice is a well-oiled machine. Be sure we're sharp here. Two on one. Turn into a scoring chance. And there's always room for some good-natured bantering with the guys. You know why you fell, eh? Because you were cheating, you were offside, no. and, and it was karma. You are offside by at least two feet. No! Yes. Come on, Johnny, on the tape here, on the tape. No, it wasn't on the tape. He had to reach. Don't give me that, yeah. I'm just trying to see Coach is always catch. right. Coach is always right. He's got four goals the last five games. How many of you got? <laughs> that guy, Soupy. I got 21. No, no, the last four games? Oh. Last five? Yeah. That's one. That's one, okay. See, making fun of him. He's got four goals in the last five games. As practice winds down with the usual sprints and stretching, Coach has a few final words for the boys about the big game. Different. We just got to come out here and play our game and play the way we uh, we know we can by putting pucks in and forechecking, winning the battles. You know, great breakouts, uh, quick neutral zone transition. All those things, guys, work against any team you play. It doesn't matter what team. So uh, we got to do that tomorrow. Tonight in Montreal, the Boston Bruins look to build on their lead in the Atlantic Division with a win over the Habs. Three of the Bruins players, however, will not be on the ice for the game. Daniel Paillet, Dougie Hamilton, and newcomer Corey Potter are tonight's roster scratches. But just because they aren't playing doesn't mean they get the night off. While their teammates hit the ice, the scratches get changed and hit the gym. Eight sprints, eight sprints, four minutes, or six, six, five. It starts with 20 to 25 brutal minutes on the bike, 
followed by push-ups, free weights, and core work. In total, the routine lasts around an hour. Yeah, I'll feel it tomorrow for sure. <laughs> After the workout, it's straight to the press box to catch the rest of the game. Arriving after a scoreless first period, their timing is perfect because the bees are lighting it up in the second. Watching from up high is a great way to see what's happening on the ice and a chance for the newly acquired Corey Potter to find out more about the bees' systems. We'll have one guy go here, right? And then, and then push, and then we'll have the the wide guy, follow the guy in the middle. It's a solid effort by the Bruins, and with the game ending, the guys who didn't play head down to offer their congrats to the guys who did. Sick, Bart. Unbelievable. My boy Z, good job, man. It's six wins in a row for the black and gold. Now, it's back to Boston to keep this train rolling. Hey, sick. In February, we asked fans what they wanted to see on upcoming Behind the Bee episodes. Overwhelmingly, the sentiment was more Tuca. So, after the Finnish netminder earned his second win in two days by beating Phoenix, we spent a few days on Tuca time. What's up? Are you playing? No. no? Okay, I'll, I'll hang out here then. Go back. Go back. What's up? What's up? Once the Bruins game against Carolina starts, Tuca gets his Bruins ball cap and takes his seat, where he gets an up-close and personal view of the action. Not a fan of that. Oh. Why would you use that dry, dry hands or whatever they have? You know, like, I tried it. It doesn't work? My hands are wet. Yeah? It only lasts for, like, keep... Maybe four minutes. Keep putting that uh, baby powder. I don't need soft hands, but I do not need soft hands. The Bruins take a two-zip lead into the third, then blow it open midway through the period, which lightens the mood on the bench considerably. Milton was a forward on that one, eh? Holy Three defenders on the Yeah. <laughs> Another good effort for the boys as they run the win streak to eight and head into a well-earned off day. Great game, Chad. Nice, buddy. Congrats. The next day in Norwood, Mass., the good folks at Monkey Sports and the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Massachusetts and Rhode Island have arranged to grant the wish of nine-year-old Maddie. Maddie is a huge Bruins fan and plays goalie. Today, she is getting outfitted from head to toe with new gear. But there's also a special surprise guest to help her out. So, Maddie. Hey, Madison. No. I'm Tuca. Nice to meet you. You need some help picking out the goalie gear, or? Maybe? You surprised? Yeah, I was just on, on the neighborhood. I heard he, you were here, so I decided to come by. Once Maddie gets over the initial shock of meeting her favorite goaltender, oh, yeah. There's lots of equipment to try on. Ready? Try to squat a little bit. Bend your knees. Yeah? That's how you're going to be standing in the game, like this. Looks like I don't have to go to the practice tomorrow. I'll take my spot. The true test of goalie equipment isn't how it looks or All even right. how it There's fits. No. The real question is, does it work? All right. Ready? Nice. Yeah, yeah. You got a lot of equip equipment on, right? <laughs> See, it doesn't hurt when it hits you in the head, right? That's it. Yeah. Awesome. Maddie's strong. I like it. A memorable experience for one special little girl. And by the sounds of it, Tuca and Maddie will be seeing each other again very soon. Yeah, you want to come and watch our practice? 
and have a pizza party afterwards, meet all the players. Yeah, they good. If you're a Bees fan, chances are that St. Patrick's Day is one of your favorite days of the year. This year, the Bruins celebrated by taking the ice in their crowd favorite warm-up jerseys. And then steamrolling the Minnesota Wild for a 4-1 victory. Jerome McGinley scores twice. Duke Rask stops 33 shots for Boston. The Bees win means it's a happy St. Paddy's Day in Boston. But while the team and the fans celebrate, the equipment guys are on the move. I got a soup. The Bruins play in New Jersey tomorrow night, so it's a fast pack after the victory, made more complicated by the post-game crush of fans and media. Are you Tito? Everyone on the team and staff pitches in to make sure there's a quick departure. From Keith Robinson running a forklift to video analyst Jeremy Rogalski helping pack the truck. Amidst the craziness, assistant equipment manager Matty Falconer makes sure to get Jerome McGinley a game puck from his historic 1300th NHL tilt. That's uh, from the last goal. Oh, oh really? Okay. Thanks, a few final autographs and pictures, and then it's off to Jersey. Sure enough, the next day finds the Bruins in northern New Jersey for game 69 of the regular season. Got time, Z! Tonight, Chris Kelly and the boys will be looking to run their win streak to 10, but it won't come easy against the determined Devil Squad. Go! Go! Shoot it! You shoot that. I shot that. You shoot that. Oh, I heard you. Yeah, but then I was like, when the guy, I said, go, Carl. Like, okay. when the guy, uh, he, was like, he left you. No, but you shoot that. With a tenuous 1-0 lead in the first, Chris has a question for the ref. Why is that not icing? Why, why wasn't that icing? Okay, I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Talk about After the Devils tie it early in the second period, the Bees respond with two goals inside of a minute. One of them shorthanded. There's a Kendall with a shorthanded bid. The shot scores! And then Kelly adds the insurance in the third. Great play, Carl. Good job, boys. Yeah, great job. Yep. Yeah. My elbow pads all mangled. Someone's going in. It was either Puck or me. Chris's third period strike gives the Bruins the cushion they need to cruise to a 4 2 win. That's 10 in a row, people. Hey, boy, Johnny! And your Boston Bruins are officially the hottest team in the NHL. As the Bruins lift off from New Jersey and head west, there's time for a meal and some catch-up with family and friends. There's also some good teamwork at the dinner buffet. Two nights later, the boys are back to work at the Pepsi Center in Denver against the Colorado Avalanche. After missing the last two games due to injury, Johnny Boychuk is back in uniform and looks ready to play. 
But with the team playing well and extra D-men available, Coach Julienne makes the decision to give Johnny one more game off. Usually, scratches are sent up to the press box to watch games, but in Colorado, the scratches get special seats. Second row, on the glass. It's not a goal, and it's not a save. But early in the second, there's one of those moments that is sure to be locker room fodder for the coming days. <laughs> Very good punch mark through the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Later in the second, Carl Soderberg makes it 2 nothing Bruins. And once again, though they're a long way from Boston, it sure doesn't feel like it. Look how many fans are here. Huh? Look how many fans are here. Chad Johnson is sharp, stopping 31 shots en route to his second shutout of the season. The win makes it 11 in a row and officially locks up a playoff berth for the Bees. Playoffs. How are you, Matty? How do I see? How are The next day, in Glendale, Arizona, the team has meetings to prepare for the last game of the trip against the Coyotes. Before the serious stuff starts, the boys spend some time revisiting the incident from the night before. Pretty sure that's not the last we'll hear on that one. But now it's time to drop the puck and play a little hockey in the desert. Oh, I've got to be ready. They'll be ready to jump today. I expect us to be better today than we were last night. Let's win this first five minutes here. Get ourselves going. Look at this guy blowing. Johnny's got to be aware. Thanks to Patrice Bergeron, the Bruins do win the first five minutes. But after that, Phoenix rallies. In the second, the Bruins find themselves behind for the first time in six games. Hey guys, it's time to start the game like this going to play. Let's start playing hockey here. That's a great screen. See it from the back. He's like trying to look around and no chance. That hit your sweater, I think. Yeah, what off my pants. <laughs> That's it, 30. Iggy's empty netter finalizes this one 4-2. A rousing come-from-behind victory. The streak is at 12, and the boys are coming home. Job us! Job up! Right. <laughs> when the 2013-14 NHL schedule came out, the month of March looked to be grueling. 17 games in 31 days, six sets of back-to-backs, and some daunting road trips against opponents fighting for their playoff lives. The Bees met these challenges head-on and ran off a winning streak that has them atop not only their division, but the entire Eastern Conference. With only a few weeks to go in the regular season, the goal for the black and gold is simple. Continue their consistent play and carry this momentum into the postseason.